For 2,000 years, God has revealed himself to the Jews as one God, Creator, and Lord. For 2,000 years. That means that it is very much said in history that God is one, one Lord, and that he is one Creator, <clears throat> and that the world has been polytheist forever, but the Jews brought monotheism, and they stood by it even through persecution. Then years later, many, many years later, in our time, Trinitarians came along and now state that God is one, yes, but three persons. Did you know that this is discrediting the Jewish people, the Old Testament, and monotheism? Trinitarians are discrediting the Jews by saying such ridiculous things. They are trying to push a doctrine that was invented in the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries. This is what they're trying to promote. And there's a long history of persecution of the Jewish people, including the persecution by Hitler to try to exterminate them. Because the Jews are a strong witness that God is one God and one Lord. So for Trinitarians to be so prideful and so arrogant to discredit the Jewish people and to make them seem like they, they didn't know anything because now we have the truth is ridiculous. Shema Yisrael, hear, O Israel, God is our Lord, God is one. A biblical commandment from the Torah in Deuteronomy 6.4 is recited every morning and evening in Jewish families. It's of such significance. It's also the final prayer of Yom Kippur, one of the most important holidays in the Jewish calendar. And did you know... Shema is one of the first prayers Jewish children learn and interact with. Hello, my name is Rabbi Yehuda Black and I am the Rabbi of Kenton Shaw. Today I'm going to speak about why is the Shema so important. First I want to tell you, what is the Shema? The Shema is composed of three paragraphs, one, two from Deuteronomy, and one from Numbers. The Shema is not a prayer per se, in the fact that we do not petition or request God for our needs in the Shema. Rather, the Shema is the declaration of faith of the Jew. The first paragraph speaks about accepting God as our God. The second focuses on accepting his mitzvot, his precepts, and the concept of reward and punishment. The third paragraph focuses on divine revelation and the tzitzit. It is with the words of the Shema that the Jew departs from this world. And the Shema kind of reminds us that Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, the same God that is totally transcendent and beyond this entire universe, at the same time as Elokeinu is is our God and part of every little thing, every little bit that we see in this world, a bird flying by, a blade of grass, all of that, our relationships, our connections, our work, our study, it's all enmeshed in one whole because really it's just all a part of the one same creator. Shema is a reminder that all of those pieces are really all one. The Jewish people are some of the most intelligent people on this earth. There's a saying that says that there's a doctor in every family. And if you look at the technology that Israel has, it is second to none. So the Jewish people are very intelligent and they would know the difference between God being one or being a compound unity as Trinitarians falsely claim. Honestly, it is a Catholic invention it is allegorical interpretation, philosophy, and mysticism coming from the Kabbalah. Whether you agree or not, if you are a Trinitarian, you are discrediting the Jewish people and the contributions that they have made in the Old Testament and really 
the New Testament like, also. Well, why, why isn't the Trinity found anywhere in the Jewish Bible? Because Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, over and over again, Lo I have no other God in the face. I am God alone. There is no other. Read Isaiah 44, verse 6 through 8. Read 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. Wash yourself and be clean and touch nothing unclean. And so openly says, I am alone. There's no one. I, I share my glory with no one. I asked the, so I asked them on, on TV. Um, we did a show together. And I said, where is the Trinity? Don't tell me some stupidity. There's a complex unity from God's plural name. Nonsense. Why don't we have the Nicene Creed anywhere in the Jewish Bible if God always believed in that? What was he key? So he said... He admitted, this is why it went, the conversation went wild, went crazy. I don't know, there's a gazillion views of it. So he said, it's true, it's not in the Jewish Bible. But he said, it's a progressive revelation. It is these texts that we look to to say, what does God say about his nature? What does the Almighty share? And all you do is look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. You know, these are the first words that a, a little Jewish boy, a little Jewish girl learn. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Why don't we have a clear text anywhere in the Hebrew Bible that gives us the Nicene Creed, the very clear statement of a triune doctrine? It's found nowhere in the Hebrew Bible. Our salvation. Salvation depends on worshiping God in truth, and therefore, let's look at the Bible itself. That's a fair question, Bill. We're coming at this question from two different sets of scripture, or uh, wholly inspired writings. And I would agree with Tobia that if you approach this question simply on the basis of the Hebrew Bible, or what we would call the Old Testament, one wouldn't come to believe that God is a trinity. If you approach this from the writings of the New Testament, which uh, I believe are equally inspired by God, then the doctrine of the Trinity is taught there. And so uh, I think it will depend on which scriptures you look at to see whether or not God is a Trinity. And I would say furthermore that the doctrine of the Trinity is not in any way incompatible with anything revealed in the Old Testament. Okay, Tovia, how would you respond to that? Think about this for a moment. That means from the time of Abraham until the time of the New Testament, talking about 2,000 years, or from the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai until Christianity, uh, first century, we're talking about 1,300 years, the Jews, you can see, knew nothing about a trinity. God warned the Jews throughout all these centuries, worship me in the truth. You admit that they would have no idea what that truth is. Abraham spoke to God. He didn't speak to a triunity. You believe that if you don't believe in the gospel, you don't have salvation. How is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David saved without the Trinity? Isn't it more likely, isn't it clear that the Trinity was unknown to anyone and it's a product of a Catholic Church, which I frankly am surprised that Protestants... There are several Trinitarians that even have written books or have videos where they discuss that the Old Testament teaches a Trinity. That is the most prideful, arrogant thing I have heard and these men keep doing this even though it's against the ethics of Christianity. You cannot go against the Jewish people who God gave them the revelation of the one God. You cannot go against that and say that no, they didn't know their God. They Now we know the true God. That is false and it takes a lot of arrogance and pride and thinking that you're very intelligent to come against the Jewish people.